Hello, in this video, I'm going to talk about functional anatomy of serratus anterior. Um, so serratus anterior, it has its name because it has a serrated edge. Think of like a serrated knife. Um, so it's got this kind of zigzag edge, hence its name. Uh, so it originates on the surfaces of our first eight or nine ribs, and then it goes deep to the scapula, so anterior to the scapula, and it inserts on the anterior surface of the medial border of the scapula. So it's important to keep in mind where this muscle is located and where it inserts to be able to understand its actions. So when these fibers shorten, um, they can have a few different actions. So they can pull the scapula away from the spine. So imagine if the medial border of the scapula is moving this way, that means abduction and protraction. So abduction as we come away from the spine, protraction as the scapula is sort of curve away and around. Um, so abduction when we stay in the frontal plane and protraction as we start to curve forward. Um, so abduction, protraction, um, also depression of the scapula. So these lower fibers, if they pull down on the scapula, that would be depression. And importantly, uh, serratus anterior holds the medial border of the scapula onto the thorax. So it anchors it onto the rib cage. Um, so you may have seen before someone who has what we call winged scapulas, meaning that the medial borders of the scapulas are kind of pulling away from the thorax. So if you can get your hands in there really easily, um, or if there's a really apparent like visual um, winging of the scapulas, that generally means that uh, serratus anterior is weak, so it requires strengthening, or it could be a nerve problem. There could be damage to the nerve that supplies the muscle. Um, so a few specific uh, things to talk about, different ways that uh, serratus anterior is important. Um, so it coordinates with the glenohumeral joint. So serratus anterior does not cross the glenohumeral joint. It does not have any action on the glenohumeral. Um, so what I mean by that is the ball and socket joint of the shoulder. So it's not acting in abduction or flexion or anything like that. Um, but it is important in positioning the scapula on the thorax in a way that it allows the glenohumeral joint to go through all of its necessary actions. Um, so serratus anterior moves the scapula into, into position to allow for um, any movements that need the um, upper extremities in front of us. So anything with flexion of the glenohumeral, abduction of the glenohumeral, um, any kind of reaching task. It's also referred to as a boxer's muscle because it's so important in the movement of the scapula when we're throwing a punch. Um, so again, it doesn't act on the glenohumeral joint directly, but it's important for positioning the scapula so that the glenohumeral joint has freedom of movement. Um, so the serratus anterior's relationship to the rhomboids is a little complicated, uh, but to put it as simply as possible, uh, the two muscles are antagonistic in terms of protraction and abduction. Um, so serratus anterior wants to abduct and protract, and then the rhomboids do the exact opposite, so retraction and adduction. So they work opposite each other in that action, but they work together in the action of stabilizing the humerus against the thorax. Okay, so serratus anterior is pulling down on that medial border, which is anchoring the scapula to the rib cage. Um, and in that way, rhomboids work together with serratus anterior to contribute to that kind of anchoring action. Uh, then it's relationship to trapezius. So the two muscles work together um, so that we can allow upward rotation of the scapula. So again, this is another example of positioning the scapula to allow for full range of glenohumeral movement. Um, so upward rotation of the scapula is necessary to allow for full abduction of the glenohumeral joint. 
Um, if not for that abduction or for the upward rotation of the scapula, we would get stuck at about 90 degrees of abduction. We would be stuck there. Um, but because the scapula upwardly rotates to allow for further range of motion, um, that the movement of the scapula in that case is really important anytime we're going to have overhead movements, especially involving abduction, but still also for uh, flexion of the shoulder, we still need to have that upward rotation so that there's the appropriate space for the glenohumeral joint to make that full motion. Okay, the relationship of serratus anterior to the external obliques. Um, so as we see in these pictures, like let's look at this picture down here, where this white arrow is pointing, that is serratus anterior right here. And then you see there's sort of this zigzag line, kind of like a zipper. And this muscle that's forming that other side of the zigzag, that's external oblique. So where they kind of lock together like that, that's called interdigitation, as in like fingers that are interdigitating, like the fingers are locking together like that. Um, so although these muscles don't necessarily work together, they are very intimately related because the fibers sort of blend together, which means that the health and function of one of these muscles is going to affect the health and function of the other muscle. Um, so functionally speaking, they don't necessarily work together, but because of the way the fibers blend together, if we have like fascial adhesions or injury, um, to let's say external oblique, then that can cause issues with fascial adhesions and injury to the fascia or the muscle of serratus anterior or vice versa. So just something to consider if we're rehabilitating one or the other, then we need to pay attention to both to make sure that the other isn't affected. All right, finally, I want to leave you with an exercise to specifically target serratus anterior. It's called a scapular push-up. Essentially, it's a totally normal push-up, except you're not bending the elbows and you're not moving the glenohumeral joints. So instead of like a normal push-up where you're going up and down with the upper extremities, instead you're keeping the upper extremities fixed and you're really just going up and down with the scapulas. So you're protracting and retracting the scapulas against gravity. So when you're in this push-up position, when you protract, so you sort of round your back like we see in this picture here, you're protracting, you're concentrically contracting serratus anterior against gravity to cause that rounding motion or that rounding posture. And then as you're returning back to normal, gravity is allowing you to return back into that retracted position. Um, and so in that case, serratus anterior would be contracting eccentrically to control the descent into that retracted posture. Um, so just going up and down with the scapulas, with the arms, um, with the elbows and the glenohumeral joints in a stationary position is a great way to target serratus anterior. Now, that motion can also just be emphasized or incorporated into a regular push-up. So you can go through a full normal push-up, but with an extra emphasis on the protraction at the very top and the retraction at the very bottom. So as long as you're doing a push-up where you're emphasizing that scapular motion, you're still going to be targeting serratus anterior. As opposed to a push-up where uh, some people do push-ups where their scapulas are fixed in place. And so it's very much just the glenohumeral and the elbow without that scapular motion. In that case, you'd be isometrically working uh, serratus anterior, but you're not going to get as complete of a workout on those muscles if you're not going through full range of motion and allowing it to activate to its fullest extent. All right. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.